Zone Troopers. It takes war to another dimension. Somewhere in this house, deep in the heart of Octavia, locked deep beneath her four senses, Touch, taste, smell, and sound. Daddy! Here lies a sixth sense. In the world of Octavia, a world without sight, lives the sense of love. I want you to say you love me. Who are you? I've been watching you. Into this world will come a violent stranger with the power to set her free and feel fear. To bring light to a world of darkness where it's no use hiding from your own freedom. Together they will find a wilderness of hope and danger. a nightmare. Everyone has a little murder in their heart. Somewhere. Who's there? Who's there? J. Fox, life hasn't been easy. Hi. I'm going through changes. His voice is changing. Give me a keg of beer. I mean, is there anything wrong with me? He's got hair on his chest. He stopped being a boy. What do you think about it? To get worked up. At last, he's become. Scott? A wolf. An explanation is probably long overdue. Dad, an explanation? Look at me. Look at you. He's always wanted to be something special, but he never expected this. Then everybody be so Teen Wolf. He's got style. There's something different about you. Did you change your hair? He's got class. Wolf person. He's got hair all over his body. Wolves aren't supposed to be shy. He's a wolf in teen's clothing. And tonight is his night to howl. Teen Wolf, a new comedy with Michael J. Fox, star of Back to the Future. <laughs>
Singers? Sure. Rick James. Who? Rick James. Well, what about my kind of music? You like that, don't you? Jazz is dead. When was the last time jazz ever got on television? Say, hold on, man. We hot way this month. We downtown, man. Let's get a hubcap something. So what do you do for the fat man, anyway? <laughs> oh, my man. Examine all my treasures at your leisure, good ladies. And would you be so kind as to call me if someone less trustworthy than yourself should happen in? Thank you. Watch those old harpies, will you, Benjamin? My eyes and ears. Is that the case for me, Harry? No. It's for my horn. Harry's been a roving. Junk. Cheap silver plate. This stunning hall wouldn't cover half the cost of your instrument. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I took a lot of chances to get that. And look what it produced. We'll chalk this disaster up to inexperience, Harry. Beginners. But to show you my devotion to your art, let me put you on to a sure thing. Behold. A lifetime friendship ended tragically Tuesday during a rock climbing expedition to the lake shore. Attorney Raymond O'Brien watched helplessly as recording executive Robert Anderson plunged 150 feet to the rocky beach near the Anderson's summer residence. The two men had been 
close friend since college. Did you ever have any professional dealings with this Anderson? <clears throat> he was way out of my league. I never even met him. The Anderson house is a veritable treasure trove of highly crafted artifacts. Delicate stained glass like they don't make anymore. Well. I have an associate in Texas who will buy every sliver of stained glass I can lay my hands on. No questions asked. Instant culture for the Sun Belt. Look, man, I did this once to get my horn out of Hawk. I'm not a thief, and I'm not a grave robber. I'm a horn player, and that's that. Spare me your artistic disposition. Two hours' work will put that horn back in your hands. And I'll throw in an extra 200. Well? What time's the funeral? Starting about now. Give you plenty of time. Handle the glass carefully, Harry. It'll fit in this bag. And Harry, just the glass. No improvising. You only have it. Pay heed, Harry. Today you are playing my tune. You're back? Uh, for a time, just, just for a time. Are you still playing? Some things never change. <laughs> Here, let me I'll take this. You uh, see any of the gang, any of the old group? Uh, lots of them have left. Ted said they're going to close the plant. And I don't know what we'll do. There's nothing left of the old street. Yeah, I know. I uh, saw You were smart to leave when you did. I had. Uh-huh. And now you're back. For a time. Just for a time, just for a time. I gotta go. You want me to do that for you? Uh, no. No, no, no. You, you uh, have your hands full. No, it wouldn't be any trouble. I have lots of laundry of my no, own to do with no, it. No, no, no. I gotta go. Virginia. Wish me luck, Richard. Look, Gary. I want the car back.
Please move Robert's trunk out of the guest room. I don't want to see it. This time, you're a lucky fool. Very lucky indeed. It's real. Oh, yes. They'll come looking for this, all right. The window they'd have ignored, but this... with 
much more intact. Pity it's so recognizable. What do you think my cut will be? We'll see. Patience, Harry. And 200 for the window, as agreed. Wait a minute, you just said the ring was real. Give me a break. You have a fat payday coming, Harry, very fat indeed. See me on Thursday. You can wait two days, can't you? Broadway. The three blinds, man. Are you crazy? Take the long way. Forget about the meter. Time no see. Yeah, man, glad to see you back. You playing tonight? I, uh, I don't know. I got a wrap for Sam, maybe? Maybe so. Bass won't even let me in the door. Let me sit with you. What do you say, Harry? I'll be cool. It'll be like old times. Just like Paris. It was all happening in Paris one day. I gotta use the house drummer. He doesn't like people messing with his tubs. You know that, right? Right, right. Yeah, I'm the same way. I was, uh... We were right on the edge, almost there. One little push, and had taken off and flown. What happened, Harry? What happened, Dean? Nothing fucking happened, that's what happened. We're right here, man. We'll get it back. We'll do it right this time. Harry, I hate to ask you this, but I, I haven't been gigging much lately. I know you want to put this shit in your arm, man. Hey, no, I mean... Just buy some food, Dick. Just buy some food. I don't want to read about you in the papers, all right? Sure thing, Harry. You've got a bag. This time, we'll make them listen. Son of a bitch. Take care now, huh? See ya? Yeah. yeah. See you around the right here. Welcome home. Empire's up next. The biggie will do it for you. Well, the Polish Charlie Parker, live in person. The biggie will do it for you. How they hanging, Harry? Lenny, are you still hot to engineer that demo tape for me? Been hot for two months, my friend. How hot are you to come up with the rent for the studio? Non-refundable, right? Two weeks from Friday. Lock it in. You have to have the rest of it by then, or it's no go. I'll give you the whole shot for a grand. You think you can come up with it? Lenny, I'm coming up. Leave it when I see it. You know, Harry, you could make a real living if you do a commercial every now and then. Or just write a simple tune, something the kids can do. Honey, my music's not for kids. Baby, you better hope it's for somebody. <laughs>
Why are you even up there tonight, Harry? I'm just waiting for inspiration, Sam. Hope your inspiration gets here soon before the club goes to sleep. Are you here on business or pleasure? Pure 86 proof pleasure. The newspaper will soon to bed, as will I by and by. No, I really feel like things are going to happen here tonight, just like old times. So how about a shot in tomorrow's calling for your favorite horn player, huh? The only way to get attention in your hometown rag is to get out of town. Or die. You're just vamping tonight, man. <laughs> You can't vamp forever, Harry. Sooner or later, you'll have to play the tune. This is hot. It's not your letters. They're not yours either. Benjamin, how do you get in here? I walk through walls. Here's what Jack said to tell you. Your little improvisation has disrupted my orderly antique business. A plain clothesman has been nosing around. I'm checking with an acquaintance at headquarters to learn how strongly they feel about this matter. As soon as I find out, I'm on vacation. And I strongly suggest you do the same. Patience. Hey!
Mrs. Anderson, please. Mrs. Anderson, please. I have to get a hold of her, sir. I'll give you her return. Wait. Do you have a forwarding address? Just a minute, sir. This is Raymond O'Brien. I'm the Anderson's attorney. Um, I have something that belongs to Mrs. Anderson. Something that her, her husband, her late husband, Robert, wanted to have very much. This is no time for mysteries. How did you know, Robert? I'll be happy to explain all of that to Mrs. Anderson. You know where the house is? Not this afternoon. But will she be there?
Sorry, the front door was left open. Schneider, you'd probably like to stage your shakedowns indoors. I'm Raymond O'Brien, and you don't have very much time, Mr. Baranski, Harry Baranski. Baranski? Funny, I was expecting Sniff. Sit down, Baranski. What is it that you have to sell, Mrs. Anderson? How much will it cost this day? I told you what I have already belongs to Mrs. Anderson. I, I didn't say anything about selling it to her or to the estate. Could you be more specific, Mr. Baranski? I, uh, I think I better go. And I think you better talk. All right, I met Robert Anderson two years ago in Paris. I was playing a gig on the left bank. He'd come in, buy drinks for the group. It was a generous cat, that's all. Paris. That's right. Go on. He liked my playing. I play tenor sax, sometimes soprano. I can't know the jazz. After a while, things dried up for me in Paris. I went to New York, after New York here. When I got here, I called Mr. Anderson. You wanted money? I was gonna put the touch on him. Just for a loan. When I talked to him, he gave me a commission. He wanted me to lay down a tune for his lady. One of a kind gift, that's what he called it. Mrs. Anderson, he said. That's right. I see. Well, that sounds like something Robert might have done. But if you want money for your song, Mr. Baranski, that's I'm not afraid it. You... Just give me Mrs. Anderson's address. I'll mail her the music. And it's already hers. I don't monitor her movements. She's very upset right now. Robert dead. And on the day of the funeral, someone broke in here and stole some things that Diane's very attached to. What kind of long life would do something like that? Practically grave robbing. I think they want your chair, Mr. Baranski. Anderson, this is John Beeman from Mutual Insurance. About your husband's policy. I claim this large will take a little time. 
Scotch. I'm sorry, I'm a little... That's the reason I went into that place, was to get away from you. What were you doing at that cemetery? I wanted to give you a present. Robert's last present. A song. He commissioned me to write a song for you. He said it was for your anniversary. Doctor? No, no. No, I'm, uh, I'm just a little tender, that's all. I'm sorry you got hurt. I, I don't even know why I went into that place. I'm not used to being alone. Look, I'm, I'm exhausted. Do you think you can move yet? Oh, sure. I'm, I'm sorry I bothered you.
you don't deserve her. Right now, we'll be back in a few minutes with the last set. Don't go away. Harry, baby, I want you to meet Rita. Mr. Baranski? Uh, Harry here is one of my big discoveries. We're going to blow him apart, aren't we, Harry, baby? That's right. There's a few details that have to be ironed out before Harry here makes his big breakthrough record. Like about 900 details. Those details coming along, Harry, baby. Lighten like, up, man. I told you it's a piece of cake. Good. <laughs> Good. Rita here's a big jazz fan, aren't you, sweetheart? Oh, sure. You wouldn't want to disappoint one of your foxiest fans, would you, Harry, baby? No, Lenny, baby. He's temperamental. He's been to Paris. Oh, French. Hey. Check out my column tomorrow. Read all about you. Just like old ones. All right. Club's almost empty tonight, Harry. Let's close it up. You ready? Charge. Hang in there. You know me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our last set, direct from Paris, our own Harry Baranski. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we took the bus. You're from here? How could I have missed you? I couldn't have missed you. So this is home. I don't know where home is. I don't think I do either. I don't want to be alone tonight, Harry. Stay with you. No, not at my place. Everything there reminds me of Robert. Not my place. My place is a mess. I don't care. Don't turn on the light. You, uh, you don't want to 
see this room. I want to see you. So this is your bedroom. You know, you'd make a lousy thief. What? The next time you go exploring in a lady's bedroom, be more careful. I'd never leave the stuff off. Good morning. I was trying to make some coffee. Oh, that I think I got to help you with. It's that slightly earlier version of your uh, espresso machine. <laughs> That's me, Harry Baranski. So I'm good for it, right? I'll wait right here. Wait for it, right here. Okay, bye. Oh, I wanted to put in some music for us. I think these are all like Robert's records. One pretty song and I end up here. I'm sorry, I've got to go. Oh, when can I see you? I don't know. Uh, you've got to give me time. Well, well, can't we talk? I'll come to the club.
To head south. Right. Gonna head south. You know Fellow what? was here looking for you. Who is he? What do you want? Police. He wanted to take a peek at your room. You didn't let him in? Mm, no. I asked him for his warrant. He didn't have any, but he said he will be back. And told me not to tell him. Shit! 
the fuck you doing? I'm sorry. I'm just a little upset, okay? A little. Look at Harry can help me out. No, damn it. This time you gotta help me out. You won't ever club. Anybody comes around asking questions, anybody, you come in and tell me right away, okay? You got it. All right, all right. Look at Harry. I'm dying for a cigarette. Can you give me some change? Here, this you get when I come out. When I come out, all right? I'll be here. Right. Okay. Thanks. Meet Sheila. <laughs> Harry's very hot now. Cut the shit, man. I need my bread back. Need it back? Harry, boy, the studio's book. We're ready to fly. We're not flying nothing. The session is canceled. I want my money. See? What'd I say, Sheila? I was just telling her how I'm always dealing with these artistic types that never finish what they start. Then you're always complaining that you never got a break. Listen, Harry. Even if I had the money, I wouldn't give it to you. You're all good. Hey, son of a bitch! Oh, have the money! Prove it. Calm down. You got a visitor. Good news. Loser. Harry! Let it lay. You. You look like you could use some. Where's my goddamn money? I'm disappointed in your manners, Harry. Where are the niceties? The polite inquiry after my help. Is this the way you greet all your old friends? I need my bread, man. The cops are after me. Nothing is more important in this world, Harry, than old friends. One day you'll find that to be true. Now, look at me. A stranger comes prowling about my shop just when I have a very expensive piece of jewelry on the premises. Naturally, I'm concerned. So concerned that I close my little emporium and take a brief but uh, felicitous vacation. And yet, all I had to do to relieve my anxieties was make a single phone call to an old friend, a long cultivated old friend at the police department. He asked his old friends about my little problem, and lo and behold, I have no problem. And what the fuck are you talking about? No report was made of your little escapade. There's been no police investigation because no one has filed a complaint. You told me they'd come after the ring. There's a thousand explanations for that, Harry. Perhaps she didn't know her husband had the ring. Husbands have been known to keep secrets from their wives, you know. Oh, all right. But what about the window? What about that? These are wealthy people. Perhaps they didn't want a herd of thundering gendarmes stomping about their garden. Besides, my blue-coated compadre at police headquarters informed me that a friend of Anderson's has been making discreet inquiries about the stained glass market in our little town. Naturally, my name came up. What was his name? O'Leary? O'Reilly? Benjamin? O'Brien. Thank you, O'Brien. Well, O'Brien may have come snooping about the shop for the window, but have no fear. We're home free. Benjamin, give our distraught friend the envelope. Ten thousand dollars, Harry. We all made out quite handsomely. Harry! There's a guy out! Oh, oh, Where's your car? How much is it worth? It's back at the shop. I want it. I ought to cover it. Discretion, Harry, discretion. You're irrepressible. Besides, the vehicle isn't worth $2,000, but we'll be happy to accept your offer. Harry. Harry. What do you know that I don't? Just have gas in it. Have it ready. This, then, I suppose, is farewell. When you've run through that, let me know. 
always willing to help an old friend. Come, Benjamin. Take care, you slip, Harry. Fan of your work. Is that so? Yeah. Hey, I am always pleased to meet a fan of my work. We were just having a discussion about the bird, and, and she says Parker died in 59. I swear he died in 55. I, I told her you'd know. Hey, you a fan of birds, too? Birds? Yeah, I like birds. Uh, look, I, I was telling her about the library uh, at the paper with all the information about people. Ah, sure. I could find that out in a minute in the morning. Yeah, well, well, you'd like to see a newspaper office, wouldn't you, honey? Hey, yeah. Harry, it's late. Rita? Hey. I'm a big fan of newspapers. Hmm? Well, come on. I will give you the grand tour. Here we go. sounds that nobody ever heard before in their lives. Only he didn't know how to play them. So he finally just took off. He disappeared. Yeah, where'd he go? Now, nobody knows that. Look, I, I gotta go wrap this guy. Yeah, right uh, but when he... Hey, Dick. He was playing Thanks for the warning, man. Sure Did you get a look at the... talking about and you all right Downstairs. You smell that printer's ink? Hey, Aaron. You all right? Why don't you take Rita to your office? Show her where you work. She'll enjoy that. I'll uh, around here for a while. Of course. Hey, come on, sweetie. I will show you my memorabilia, including one very old and very rare bottle of scum.
I don't like this kind of work. But you're too smart for your own good. Too dumb to save your own ass. Where'd you hide it, Harry? <laughs>
find me. Your people are too newsworthy. Your last little pool party was in all the papers. I was so worried. Worried? What for? You never expected to see me alive again. Did you? What do you think you know, Harry? Let me see. I know that I found a ring that supposedly was taken in a robbery. And I found the ring hidden in a doll in your bedroom. I also found some letters to you written from Paris. I thought your husband wrote them. But they were from O'Brien, weren't I'm they? I'm cold, Harry. I'm going up to the house. The two of you were lovers. The letters prove it. Do they? Why are you so sure they were sent to me? Because I found them in your goddamn bedroom. That was Robert's bedroom, too. You read the letters, Harry. They're signed with an R. Always with an R. R for Raymond. R for Robert. And not one of them addressed to me. They're there at the tennis club and at awards dinner. Best chums, constant companions, old buddies since college. A little thing like a marriage wasn't going to keep them apart. Why didn't you just get out of it? And do what? Move back in with my mother? Slink back to the old neighborhood? Are you telling me that they killed O'Brien's wife? discovered their secret. A man in O'Brien's position couldn't let something like that get out. They faked the robbery. And they killed Tiffany. I didn't mean... Then, Robert decided to blackmail O'Brien. That he'd implicate himself. He went crazy. He found out O'Brien went to Paris with another man. Robert considered himself a very clever man. He thought he could make it look like O'Brien and I were the killers, and that he was just the betrayed husband. The police like simple explanations. Just like you do. I'm listening. They... They began to quarrel. Here, at the house, I was upstairs. At first, I didn't know what they were arguing about. And then it got quiet. Raymond came up. He said there had been an accident. Why didn't you call the police? What proof did I have? My only chance was to find the ring before O'Brien did, but you found it first. You saw me. You saw me take the window and everything else. Oh, shit. All this time, all you wanted was a letter and the ring. Everything else was a sham. Is that what it felt like? Oh, come on. The only thing for both of us to do is just get out of here. Just leave town. We're in too deep. O'Brien has money. And all the respectability it can buy, what do we have? We're nobody. If you still have the ring, Harry, we've got a chance. We can do it together. We can carry it off. Carry what off? Robert's original plan. We blackmail O'Brien. It'll work if we're together. With the ring, it'll be easy. Why should I trust you? Why? 
You don't have to trust me. You can bring me down with O'Brien. But I thought you felt something for me. I did. But all this time you were you were playing me to find out what I knew. But I wasn't kidding. I wanted you. I've always wanted you. And now? O'Brien. I told him to meet me at the cemetery. In a year. We could beat him. But we've got to be together.
told you Harry wouldn't keep them. <laughs> Figured out. But I talked him out of it. What'd you tell him, Diane? A fairy tale. Just a fairy tale. Is this really the end of it now? What do you think? Give them a few days to begin to feel secure, and then we'll begin. <laughs> 